Well, folks, there's just one more thing I want to tell you about here, and then yes, I'm going to take a break here for a while, but I really want to tell you about the CSS Georgia. It would have been right exactly where we are almost during the Civil War. So the CSS Georgia was modeled after a captured Union gunboat called the Merrimack, which may ring a bell to some of you if you know anything at all about ironclad naval warfare. When they began building the CSS Georgia here, they ran into some really big issues. One of the biggest issues they faced here was they simply couldn't get a hold of enough of the iron plates to build her armor like they wanted to. So they had to improvise. They began tearing up railroad tracks in the area, used the T-rail that the trains ran on as this vessel's iron topside. Seemed like a brilliant idea at the time, but it made this boat way heavier than intended. Then, the only engine they could find for it was a 90 horsepower steam engine from this old steamboat. Imagine what you think would happen to a 200 foot long ironclad gunboat trying to be pushed along with a little 90 horsepower steam engine. That's kind of like the bus here at the Georgia Queen where to go out one day and want to save some fuel and buy ourselves a little 90 horsepower outboard motor she would find on a bass boat and have one of our crew back there trying to motor us up and down the river. I think we would find out pretty quickly that's not quite enough power to move all our big old boat around, right? And they realized this. The day they launched her into the Savannah River, they tried to get her moving against the current that day under full steam ahead, and she started falling backwards against the current. Yeah, literally could not move under her own power. So that is why they never used her as a blockade runner like they originally intended. They just had to tow her down here to Fort Jackson. They anchored her right there in the middle of the river, placed her broadside down the river, and used her as a floating gun battery for the duration of the war. Until, of course, General Sherman arrived. They didn't want this big old ironclad to fall into enemy hands, right? So they came down here, opened up her sea valves, and let her sink to the bottom of the river right there. That right there is where the CSS Georgia sat for the next 150 years. And yes, that was up until just three years ago when the U.S. Navy, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and Texas A&M University all got together to raise up the Georgia there. They did a really incredible job, able to recover more than 30,000 artifacts from the bottom, which have all now been sent to Texas A&M for, you know, archaeological preservation and study, hopefully going to be sent back here to Savannah one day to be put in a local museum. But you know what, folks, we don't really know if this is going to happen or not, because guess what? This is the crazy part here, is that the U.S. Navy still considers the CSS Georgia a captured enemy gunboat. So yes, it is still technically the U.S. Navy's property to this day. Kind of weird to think about, right? And of course, also very strange to think how this warship was built by a different country, and of course, it was built right here in Savannah, Georgia, right? Well, folks, at this point, as I mentioned, yes, I'm going to go ahead and take a break here for a little while. But when I come back to you, it'll be as we're approaching the waterfront. i got a few more things I want to talk about up there. And then if you want to join me up here in the stop deck again, right towards the end, we'll do a little trivia contest up here. And I'll hand out some prizes for the right answers for that. But until then, guys, just kick back, relax, enjoy this beautiful day out here. And I'll be back with you folks here in just a little bit.